every kid should be playing baseball. Well, there you go. For some reason in America, every kid has to play baseball. If you can't take a liner to the chest, you shouldn't be playing. <laughs> a little, a little tip to the parents out there: when your kid's in the backyard, maybe try to figure out what they might be good at. If you know, it's ballet, well, that's what I'm getting at. Like I, I say it all the time, but uh, it's been a lot of fun watching my uh, my wool, my little nephews grow up. And I go to these games. I go to the the pee wee hockey games and the little league games and stuff. And uh, thank God, you know, my nephews they got a, they got some skills. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, you go to some of these games and you see some of these kids that they have no business being on the baseball field. Yeah, maybe they should be on the in drama class. Y- you could you could tell even at a very early age that uh, some of these kids will do much better on a stage if you know what I mean. Maybe they should be doing a flower arrangements, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Whatever. Not be on the field, but every I guess every father wants their son to be a baseball star in America. So mm-hmm. uh, you know everyone everyone throws their kid into the old pool, and, yeah. they, and they just hope they got a major leaguer. And dad's the last one to pull him out of there because dad really wants him to yeah. uh, be a, a sports kid. And I, I tell the story: a kid on first base while the game's going on, kind of like just twirling around like a ballerina. Yeah, and then the the, the son's uh, father's on the sideline, just mortified, just trying to get the kid down into the position, into the first base position. Kid doesn't care. He wants to be on a stage. He wants to go do anything but baseball. But it's obvious the father's kind of pushing this on him. Do Did you? Know, you I'm well, sorry. Um, yeah, I used, oh, I'm sorry. I used to spin in a circle. It was a nervous tick I had. I would spin once in a circle to the right. <laughs> so stupid. I, once in a circle only. Things are wrong. Things are wrong. Spin. Nah, all's well. <laughs> and I was playing for Young's Glass Service in fourth grade, and I was in the outfield, and I was spinning, occasionally spinning, and uh, my coach screamed from the sidelines, Hey, Jimmy, what are you, a ballerina? <laughs> I was in right field. Yeah, of course you were. Both are. teams... All the fathers heard it. Oh, it was awful. Well, they were probably all looking at you going, what is he doing spinning around? Wait and not wait and not wait until I get uh, back into the dugout, coach. <laughs> How about a little quiet talking to? No, about, you got to make an example. How about you take me to the side yeah. when no one's looking? <laughs> Oof, boy, he took me right out of ballerina school, though. I quit spinning. Did you stop spinning after that? No, you're not. But did you look kind of, you know... Limp wristed while doing no, it. No, That's no, what no. I'm talking. You about. spun like a man. Oh yeah, no, I just, I, I just, I, I'll, I'll show you. Which doesn't work on radio. Yeah, but I want to see it anyway. But it would just be, it would just be a spin. Like you'd have to take, like, uh... <laughs> okay, that's silly. Yeah. Were what your hands hip? on your hips like that? Or whatever, or just whatever you were doing. And then you did that, and everything was right with the world, right? I don't know why? Yeah. Man, it's like it's like, it's like that. So when you said ballerina, <laughs> boy, that touched off a lovely memory. All you have to do, though, is go to one game and you realize who's there to play baseball and who's there because daddy wants them to be a, a baseball star. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I was uh, I was never a sports guy. You are, obviously, you know, op, uh, uh, talking all the time about basketball and things like that. Were you uh, one of those, though, where uh, dad would show up and, well, my dad, and be proud of your... Uh, your uh, Prowess out on the field or something. Well, my on dad. The court. My, my dad was a basketball star back in the day. Had to try out for the Knicks. That's the the big story in oh. my family. But uh, he blew it off because of personal uh, issues with his first wife. And so, I'm sure, never regretted that one. Well, she never ended, looked back with regret on that. She ended up dying. <laughs> so Jesus, he decided to be with his dying wife instead of uh, trial for the Knicks. I think it was pretty. <laughs> 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 Hey, you're not going to get a tear from me. <laughs> That's terrific. You're not going to get That's a tear terrific. from me, Ant. Oh, it's the only reason I'm here. God. A fine uh, a fine tragedy like that. Wow. That's the only reason I'm on this earth. I was only joking. Because then he turned around and married my mom and had six uh, six lovely kids. So See, there you, you go. You wouldn't have been here. But uh, we, was, we were brought up with basketball in our blood, kind of. Although I never had the height. And that was my sport. I tried the Little League. And I was like, Jimmy, I was right fielder. I was scared to be in the batter's box. I realized early on, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, I got some knowledge. I, I, I realized early on, I don't want to play baseball. I, I like playing in the schoolyard with my friends when there's no pressure and there's no you know, kid th- trying to throw a ball as hard as he can and he has no freaking uh, control. Yeah, That was never fun for me. So I said, you know what? Basketball and, and running and other things were, were much more my speed. I had the uh, I had a good arm. I could throw really far, really hard, but nothing else. 
I was a disaster as far as any kind of uh, uh, sports went. What was, your, what, was your be- what was your favorite sport? <laughs> None. None sport. Not one sport where you enjoyed it. There was nothing I I'm did. I'm not talking about like, making the high school team or anything, but just one sport growing up where you're like, you know what, I like this. Like For the, me, it was basketball. I could play basketball, and I did when I was a kid, like 12 hours a day. Hated basketball. I was bad at everything. Like I was bad at everything. I, I liked I liked dodgeball because I could throw the ball pretty hard, and I was really skinny, so I was hard to hit. That's a that's a sport you play with girls. No, no, no. It's a, it's a sport that you, it's not even a sport. It's a dumb game a, you play in gym class. It's recreation. Yeah, it's recreation. It's not a sport. But that was it. I mean, things like baseball. I was always the kid that uh, even if I connected with the ball, it was an infield out. Yeah. It was done. I couldn't get it over the goddamn uh, the heads of the infield. And uh, two hand touch football, it's ridiculous. What am I going to do? I wasn't big enough to do any blocking, that's for sure. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get away from anybody, so I just get slaughtered. I was a little like string bean. Uh, hockey, there was no hockey. Oh, I, I loved hockey. hockey growing up. We used to play stupid like uh, a floor hockey. I loved floor hockey in gym, and there was always the big douche who would have to check you against the accordion door that separated you from the girls. All I pictured were horrified girls looking as they're playing whatever they did over there. With their dyke teacher. <laughs> All right, girls, time to climb the rope. I'll be holding the bottom. I'll be holding the knot. Make sure you wear your skirts. <laughs> Get those panties off, girls. As they see the accordion door just go <laughs> get pushed in because another skinny kid's getting his head smashed By as the they check. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Shower time, girls. <laughs> uh, coach, we just got out here. Shower! Listen to me! We're all showering today. The dyke girl gym teacher. Yeah, why Why was the, the gym teacher ever called out for being a dyke ever? Every one of them. Every single one of them was a, was a lesbian in hiding. And the guy gym teacher was the opposite of that. Was like all man ready to punch a fifth grader in the face. Uh, he was just a miserable F. Like that, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman <laughs> coming into your... Every male gym teacher was uh, a failed athlete. Yeah, yeah. He kind of he made it to like the farm team or minor league this. They all got a that, story. Or went to Europe to play his sport. And then finally he had nothing left. So he's, uh, he's, he's like uh, teaching gym class to a bunch of freaking burnouts. And the goof to all those guys is, well, you, you, you watch. You'll be teaching gym class. Right. No, I won't. You know, I'm making the cut. I'm going to make the team. Mm-hmm. And then they don't make it, and they take out all their aggression and aggravation on kids. But, dude, in my junior high and high school, the, the, the female gym teacher, she, she was more of a male than I was. Yeah. Like, no one noticed this. And she was she was allowed access to the oh, smorgasbord to the her. dressing room or the, yeah. or the showers, whatever. Locker rooms. Whatever. The, the because, showers. Because you never think that the gym teacher could be a lesbian. Like, she's just kind of, you know, monitoring and uh, yeah, watching out for the girls. She's a tomboy that never grew out of it, and she's 45 years old. With the short hair and the, and the big oversized sweatshirt. Short gray hair. You know the look. What is going on here? Protect your- awful. And and when you're in junior high, as a girl especially, you have no clue about uh, being a lesbian. You have yeah. no idea, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Especially back when we were going to school. Now, I, I'm sure they're a little more open to all that stuff, and they're growing up a lot faster. But back in the day, these girls had no clue, and they just thought it was safe to be kind of naked in front of the gym teacher. Yeah. Imagine what that gym teacher <laughs> was thinking. And she's just making believe she has to do something in the locker room, and oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. <laughs> Jim teacher walks in. I, <laughs> I gotta get the girls out to the class. <laughs> suit up, girl. Girls, suit up. I. <laughs> and in my school, just completely aroused. Yeah. In my school too, for some odd reason, the gym teacher's office yep. was in the locker in room. In the locker room. 
what the hell was that about? And it, it was kind of like a booth with, like, uh, windows. Yeah. So she's sitting there on the phone making believe she's uh, getting ready for the big game or ordering more dodgeballs, whatever the hell they did. Picture your cubicle <laughs> at work in a strip club. <laughs> That's where they work. <laughs> I got a phone call. Uh, let me make... <laughs> having trouble with my whistles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need, um... <laughs> I'm gonna need uh, another gross of dodgeballs, some um, field hockey shin pads. You girls dry off well. <laughs> you don't want to get athletes <laughs> 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 the office right in the locker room. I swear to God. That oh, is, I never even, rem I totally just, you that totally is, made me remember that. That is the funniest thing I've heard in weeks. Oh. And I told you the story. I've mentioned the high school. I better not. But uh, it's long gone because they uh, they finally remodeled. But uh, I was one of those, uh, I helped out the uh, the uh, the coach. Coach. I, I forgot we had a little title, like we were coaches, uh -oh. <laughs> helpers, whatever. I don't know yeah. what the hell it was. Wow. <laughs> but we had access to his uh, office, which was right next to the, the women's locker room. Uh, his office was not in the locker room like the, the girls was, the girl t uh, teacher and coach. And we noticed this cork board that had all the schedules and stuff. And one day, I don't know, maybe it was passed down from generation to generation, but someone just knew to close the door, lock it, and remove the cork board. Uh, and there was a fine, fine hole that went right people. through, right through not just a wall, like it was those blocks. Cinder blocks. Cinder yeah. blocks, thank you. Th this hole went all the way through the cinder block. Someone worked very hard. <laughs> and and I guess I finally was invited it into the inner circle and i was like hey you want to see something like yeah whatever we're just sitting around talking about the knicks or something dumb because we're all obsessed with basketball and one kid's like you want to see something like like what he goes oh trust me on this so they locked the door and they removed the cork board and there's a hole and he waited perfect he waited as the period is ending yeah and all the girls file into the locker room removes the cork board and it was like wasn't covered by a poster of Rita Hayworth. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to say this because I know uh, you know a lot of people who went to high school listen to this show. They chatter. I saw most. We're watching you. <laughs> I saw most of the girls that I graduated with naked. Oh, what a thrill! Naked. Was... That was about the biggest thrill you could possibly have. Was the the thought. That you were going to see them naked. It was actually the thought, when I would watch the girls come out of the locker room, the thought that they were just naked was enough to like get you all worked up. Sure. That was like, oh, and, the, and then you'd be next to the locker room, the girls' locker room, and think, right behind this wall, it's just a little wall, is just paradise. There it is. And, and it's what they call sanity. That kept you from just running in there, <laughs> but because there was, we talked yesterday about the over-the-top guy, guy that didn't know how far to push it. Yeah, there was always a kid every year or so that would just run into the girls' locker room. He just couldn't take ah, it anymore. I can't <laughs> take it. I gotta see this. His little perf switch went off. Oh, and it, it, the news would spread through the school. <laughs> He'd be in trouble. It's just yeah, yeah, his little purse switch ran, went off, and he had, I got to get in there. It's just tempting you. Yeah. It tasks, it tasks me. me. It says it right on the door, girls' locker room. <laughs> it says, nude girls are in here. <laughs> right. I'm, my hormones are pumping. I'm going through a time of my life where I can't keep this thing in one spot. <laughs> it, 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 don't, don't. And there's a door. There's a sign on it that might as well just say, all of your nude girl dreams right here. Doesn't even have a locking knob on it. You don't know how. You push it, it opens. You know how you. What the hell was going on down no. below? Oh, you're just trying to keep it under control. I gotta get in there. <laughs> right, it's like Regis. I gotta get in there, Gelman. <laughs> There's no girls.
The worst would be if you time it wrong and you run in while they're still dressed. So oh. you're thrown out of high school and you saw nothing. And they just turn around fully clothed going, what is this idiot doing? <laughs> you really had a guy that would just run in there? Yeah, every year or so there was some guy that would just lose his mind and have to run in, uh, usually with some like a bandana around his face or something. But you, everyone knew who everyone was. Yeah. So you get busted. I uh, I worked out at a gym uh, that I got to keep this uh, on the QT, too. Oh, you're only talking to a couple of people. And um, and there was a, a a cork board, another cork board. Those cork boards with like the yoga class schedule and the and the spinning schedule and you know uh, massages when you could get a massage. Nice gym. And I discovered because one day I'm I'm just looking at the schedules and I just kind of take a little glance to the left and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, perfect shot. At the mirror ah. in the girls' locker room that bounced off to the nudity. <laughs> and I would just stand there in between sets, like, make him believe I'm looking at the yoga schedule over and over. Boy, he again. sure is interested in that <laughs> yoga schedule. <laughs> oh, and I couldn't believe that no one discovered this. And it wasn't, you didn't, you didn't have to look like a creep. You were just looking and just kind of looked over to your left and boom, mirror, boom. And and you would just wait for the hot chick to be done with her workout, and you would uh, time to check the yoga schedule, hoping, hoping, hoping. It was like fishing. I'll tell you who else knew it: the person who wrote the yoga schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who else would put that faggoty nonsense on the wall? <laughs> you occasionally get that in uh, bathrooms at bars or something like that. Yeah. Perfect timing. You're walking by, the door flings open. You could look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. It's a girl coming out of the stall. You don't really see anything. But you're like, hey, who hey, just got a little is, view into the that uh, was all right, man. inner sanctum? <clears throat> all right. Oh. A anyway, uh, you, you, the the female gym teacher bit is beyond hilarious. Yeah. Why they put her off? It's I great swear to God, it brought that up. I know. I I remember it. Oh, it was in yours too. Yeah. The office was in the locker the room. Was in it, it. it was a way to save space. I don't know what that was about. There were a couple of times after school hours. Uh, if I was in the school for any reason whatsoever, I don't even know why I'd be in there, but no one was in there. Me and a couple of friends would go into the girls' locker room just to look around. And that was like... And see what it was like. It's like, yeah. That the, would get your mind going. You go up to the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Find out whose locker it is. Oh, yeah, I know this chick. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tomorrow she'll be naked right in front of this locker. Like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the can you do the dyke gym teacher? All the clueless uh, young teenage girls. Yeah, my girls should be coming in soon. Uh, they've been out playing field hockey. Uh, we just need another order. Uh, we, what are we looking for? That's a, uh, we need some uniforms. And you got to uh, the uh, team. And you got to order the giant ball that I, no one knows. Yeah, why. we need the big round ball that they lay on and roll around on their little bellies. <laughs> All right. Oh, here they come. Hold on. All right, girls, shower time. I'll be a home. Oh <laughs> get on. <laughs> get on. Undress, girls. That's it. Get clean. It's man, what I taught you in health class, because I'm also the health, health teacher. <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! Damn it, beautiful, <laughs> ladies. Make sure you wash your guests. Wash right there. <laughs> Are the schools that clueless? Oh, that's great. Yeah, put the uh, gym teacher's office right there. It'll keep it all convenient. They can talk with the girls. I bet you that's how the the Dyke gym teachers chose their job. They probably yeah. went from school to school and went, wait, uh, wait a minute. Where's the office? Oh, uh, uh, we, we decided to conserve space, and, and your office is going to be in the, uh, the the women's locker room. Okay, don't care about the pay. <laughs> right. Whatever, I'll be in. What time do I start now? When do the naked girls come in? Where's my whistle? <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. Your office is right off of the um, teacher's lounge thing. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> All right. We'll, uh, we'll break. We'll continue. Quentin Tarantino coming in to talk about Grindhouse. Nice. Yes.